So today the Monday in the first uh, week of Lent. I'm going to be here again after a long time here in New Jersey, in Britain, New Jersey. And the epistle for this, not the epistle, read only the gospel. Today is the Monday of, the, uh, of Lent. Read only the gospel. The gospel this Monday, the second week of Lent. Go ahead and stand, please read just the gospel. Uh, the second letter according to St. John, chapter 8. At that time, Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, I go, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sin. Whither I go, you cannot come. The Jews therefore said, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Whither I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I say to you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sin. They said therefore to him, Who art thou? Jesus said to them, The beginning, who also speak to you. Many things I have to speak and judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And the things I have heard of him, they, these same I speak in the world. And they understood not that he called God his Father. Jesus therefore said to them, When you shall have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father hath taught me, these things I speak. And he that sent me is with me, and he hath not left me alone, for I do always the things that, that please him. That's one of the words of today's Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Father, Son, and Ghost, Amen. Here in the Gospel, our Lord speaks of the, as John chapter 8, he's fighting this great battle with the Jews, and it's the final battle, going before his crucifixion. And we have to keep in mind what the final battle is. There are some priests who have made a mistake with good intentions, but made a mistake saying, the devil's final battle is a battle against the family. No, the devil fights against God. His final battle is not against the family. It's not abortion. It's not birth control. It's not any of the sins against the second decal part of the Decalogue. The fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, and tenth commandments. It is a battle between God and Satan. And here it is made very clear, a very important point that many moralists will not recognize today. If you do not believe that I am he, you shall die in your sin. And he says in the singular, as if there's only one sin. Then he says, if you do not believe I am he, because you do not believe I am he, you shall die in your sins. And then he says it in the plural. There is one sin, and that is not believing that Jesus Christ is God. And the rule of all our actions. And the rule of all our thoughts. And, there, and that the final battle is, God is rejected as God. And he is replaced by man. And because you don't believe I am he, you shall die in your sins. This, in fact, is a foundational reason why the anti-abortion movement, why the movement against Joe Biden's election, why the movements against communism, and against the corruption of our country by, by reforming the Senate and the, and, the, and the Supreme Court and the presidency are all doomed to complete and utter failure. They are all doomed to complete and utter failure because they don't address the sin. Because you are in your sin, what is that sin? It is the sin of choosing other gods before the only God. And St. Paul, to make it clear that even the impure sins, even the gluttony sins, they are all forms of idolatry. St. Paul says, their God is their belly, their glory is in their shame. So that even those that have turned to impurity, and those that have turned to the sins of gluttony, and the sins of greed, and all the material sins, they have chosen things over God. Hence, when a priest stands up in the pulpit, 
or a Protestant minister stands up in his pulpit. A conservative Novus Ordo priest stands in his pulpit. A priest saying the Latin Mass says in his pulpit. Any priest stands in the pulpit and says, you need to stop practicing birth control. You need to stop aborting your babies. You need to live a moral life. You need to stay with your first wife. You need to vote for a Republican candidate. It's a mortal sin to vote for a Democrat. If he says all those things and does not let the people know that abortion is in this world, impurity is in this world, and the sins of greed are in this world because we worship not the true God and we do not hold the true faith whole and entire. Hence, Jesus Christ says, you are now attacking the essential enemy, and that is myself. Now they are so filled with the hatred of Jesus Christ himself that they're going to kill him. And then he says, if the Son of Man be lifted up, I am going to a place where you cannot go. And, they, and you are of this world, and I am not of this world. And I am going to a place that you cannot go. And they said, are you going to commit suicide? Are you going to commit suicide? Because that's the only way you can leave this world is if you commit suicide. And then he says, If the Son of Man be lifted up upon a cross, he shall draw all things to himself. If I be lifted up, I shall draw all things to myself. And then they said in another passage, and this, we brought up the same thing another time, and they said, Now we know thou hast the devil. A little bit later he brings up the same thing. That Jesus Christ is going to be crucified. And when he is crucified, what's going to happen? The crucifixion by which the world takes Jesus Christ's flesh out of this world, by which the world crucifies Jesus Christ's flesh in obedience to the devil and obedience to their own sins of the world, the sins of the devil and the sins of the flesh. They will put him to death. And what shall happen when he dies? What shall happen when the body of Jesus Christ dies? There shall be the defeat of Satan, he shall rise from the dead, and he is going to draw all things to himself. Now, this is happening right now to the mystical body of Christ. Just as the physical body of Christ had to be crucified in order that he might have his victory over Satan, so the mystical body of Christ, which is the Holy Roman Catholic Church, must experience a crucifixion in order that it might rise from the dead and bring an end to the reign of Satan. We are near that victory because the world has now turned its hatred more and more and continues to turn its hatred more and more directly against God. And when this hatred is turned into a full-blown persecution, and the persecution opens, then the Blessed Virgin Mary shall have her victory, then our Lord Jesus Christ shall show his power, and there shall be a resurrection of the church, and all things shall be drawn to the church, fulfilling the prophecies of many prophecies of the past, Bartholomew's Holtzhauser, the prophecy of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Fatima, the Blessed Virgin Mary of La Salette, and of Quito, Ecuador, and many other prophecies, that there will come a time when there shall be a persecution of the church. There shall come a time when there is a tribulation and a trial for the church, just like there was for the crucifixion 2,000 years ago in the body of Christ. But the end of this persecution is going to be the drawing of all things to the church. We are getting very close to the complete victory of the church. But what is required? That, that the men of the world turn against God. And they are doing that. It is also required of the men of God to remind the world, don't just try to become moral. One of the very grave evils and grave deceptions that is being put forth in the conservative movement throughout the world. We must tell people, first be moral, first be nice to your wife, first stop practicing abortion and birth control, first start doing the moral and spiritual things, say your private prayers, do your rosaries, and then later on we will teach you about the true faith, and later on we will teach you that Protestantism is bad, 
We will teach you that the new mass is bad. We will teach you that the conservative uh, trap of the old mass accepting the new mass is bad. We will teach you that the false conservative movement is bad and that you must come to the real tradition of our fathers of the last 2,000 years. But first you've got to be moral. And first you've got to fight against abortion. And first you've got to do the right things morally. And then we can speak to you of God. Now when, our, when God in flesh, 2,000 years ago, just before his crucifixion, was fighting with the Jews and fighting with his enemies, he did not say, just simply be moral. He said, I am he. What was his final conversation with Pilate? He didn't tell Pilate, you're a cheap politician. You're a mediocre individual. You have an immoral life. You are not doing your duty as a as as a as a uh, a leader of the as a tetrarch of Gal of, of of Judea. He didn't say that. He simply stood in front of the wicked Pilate and he said, "I am the truth." That's what he said. And he who is of the truth hears my voice. And then when Pilate said, "I have power over you." Then the Lord Jesus Christ said, no, you do not have power over me. Only God has power. You have no power. And furthermore, I shall judge you. And I judge you right now. And I tell you that your sin is bad. But the sin of Caiaphas and the sin of Annas, the sin of those that handed me over to you, is a worse sin. Notice that in the very end on Holy Thursday night and Good Friday morning, Jesus Christ emphasizes his divinity. It is on Holy Thursday night, just before he dies, that he says to his apostles, Eat my flesh, now really eat my flesh. This is my body, this is my blood. And as often as you shall do these things, do them in commemoration of me. And he made his apostles priests and bishops a few hours before they ran away as cowards. A few hours before they would show their terrible weakness. But what made it possible for them to survive the three days of that terrible time between Good Friday 3 p.m. and the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning? It was the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary comforting them and the fact that they had Jesus Christ in their flesh. They were truly alter Christus. They were truly other Christ. They were other Christs. They had the strength of Christ, in the, in the divine Christ, in their bodies. They had the strength of Christ inside of them to hold them up during the time of Good Friday 3 p.m. and the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. They had the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary. They were in the sacrifice itself, in the great battle between heaven and hell, between the God of this world, who is worships, which worships Satan, and the God of all creation, who is the true God. We must understand that as the world gets more and more immoral, the moral fight is not the way to defeat the immorality of the world. The immorality of the world must be defeated by going to the only way and the only truth and the only life that is the answer to all evils and all sin, and that is the person of Jesus Christ, who is truth, and his holy church and his holy dogma. And therefore he said right before he died, I am he. And also, why did he save that good thief? Why did he save St. Dismas? St. Dismas said, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And when he said those words, he confessed, that he believed that Jesus was God, and he confessed that he is going into his kingdom to prove that he's God, and that this man dying on the central cross is more powerful than all those fools that are at the foot of the cross, and all those soldiers, and that entire Roman civilization that is behind the crucifixion, and the entire Jewish people that are behind the crucifixion, and the entire world filled with sin that is behind the crucifixion, that this man hanging on the central cross right now dying, he is going into his kingdom, and therefore he is God. And I want him to remember me when he goes into his kingdom. Therefore, in our times in which the Holy Mother Church is being crucified, 
The most important thing to do is to embrace the divine truth, to the whole truth of the Catholic faith, handed down to us by our ancestors, and in recent times by the greatest apostle of our age, which is Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, who handed down the truth whole and inviolate, and without compromise with error and heresy. And he handed down that truth to preserve the church during its present time of crisis. And the only way that it will get through this crisis is by priests, faithful, all the members of the hierarchy and lower hierarchy of the church, to adore Jesus Christ as the only true God, to recognize Holy Mother Church as the only means and only ark of salvation, and that outside of this ark there is no possibility of salvation, and that we must embrace all his teachings. And when we embrace all his teachings in our head, it goes down into our hearts, it goes down into our passions, and it comes out in our actions, and sin is pushed out of our being. But if we don't embrace Jesus Christ's true teaching in our heads, if it doesn't, it cannot pass down through our hearts and through our whole body and out into the driving sin out. Hence, we must recognize in the battle against abortion, in the battle against the Democrats, in the battle against communism and socialism in our country, in the battle against the wickedness of these vaccines, in the battle of all these terrible things that are happening around us, causing death and suffering all around us, the only way to win the battle is to remind all souls on earth there is one God, and that God is our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. There is one ark of salvation, which is our Holy Mother of the Church, and we must adore Him and come back to the true sacrifice, the Mass, come back to the true faith in its totality, and then the enemy, who is Satan, shall be utterly defeated. And this is what will happen when the Pope finally obeys heaven and consecrates Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's obedience to God and His Holy Mother that defeats immorality. And to try to find another way to defeat it is doomed to complete failure. Because it goes to you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.